because my business was just named as one of the 100 fastest co growing companies in the urban US by Fortune magazine, I was asked by the Lisbon chapter of the Women's President's Organization to share my experience of how I took my business to the next level. I was thinking about how, over the last 10 years, my company was able to sustain a revenue growth of 20% a year. And I realized that there were just a few key factors. And the first factor that stands out the most prominent to me was an opportunity that I had about 10 years ago. My company was selected by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Massachusetts to take part in a corporate mentoring program. And what was very unique about this program and very different than a traditional mentoring program is that I was not going to be mentored by just one person, but a team of experts were put together by Blue, Cro Blue Cross Blue Shield to mentor my company. So I had a person who specialized in business strategies, I had somebody who specialized in human resources, and I had somebody who specialized in finances. And so the way the program worked is that this team was going to work with me and my company for a year to help me strengthen and grow my own business. Well, what was really interesting to me was the first meeting we had. I got invited into this beautiful, huge conference room where I already felt very intimidated. But then when they looked at me and they said, we're going to do a SWOT analysis, I said, a what? They said, SWOT analysis. I said, what's that? And they said, an analysis of my company's strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And so you understand, my background is in law, not in business. So a SWOT analysis was as foreign to me as Pastiche Donata was before I came to Portugal. So I was a little bit overwhelmed. But what was really incredible about this experience was that in that first meeting, what I learned and realized was that my company's greatest strength was also my company's, uh, so, I'm sorry, my company's greatest weakness was also my company's greatest opportunity, and that was technology. And as a result of that first meeting in the year that followed, I implemented a number of changes in technology and profitability of my company, as well as the efficiency of my business processes increased by 75%. So it was amazing and it was a real tangible result. But in a bigger picture, what I learned to do through this mentoring program was, or what I understood was what is super important as you're growing your business is not what a lot of us do every day when we have a small business, which is we work every day in the business. We focus on the details. But if you want to grow your business, you need to learn to work on your business instead of just in your business. So that's a huge, uh, another lesson that I received from the corporate mentoring. And in this program, I worked with a group of about six students. And what they did was help my company develop its first website. And as you can imagine, there is no way today to grow your business, no matter what it is, without the presence of a website. After being introduced to this MBA consulting program at Boston College, because Boston is the home to lots of universities, I looked around to see if there were any other universities offering a similar program. And Boston University, business school was offering a similar program, so I applied to that program. And through that program, what I gained, I, w one of my um, goals for the year at that point was that I wanted to complete an application so that my company could qualify as a vendor to the federal government, the US federal government. There is not a more difficult application process than trying to become a vendor for the US government. I don't care what people may say about 
bureaucracies that exist in Portugal, I am telling you, there was nothing worse than this. And I worked, or the team, the, the group of students worked with my company to put this together. And I became certified as a vendor for the US government. And there is no larger employer in the United States than the US government. So that opened a tremendous number of doors for my company. Bob had this great honor to be the US ambassador in Portugal. I was really, really excited. This is an incredible country. I hadn't been here, but I had heard it was. I am friendly with a lot of people in Boston. We have a very large Azorean population. I had heard all about Portugal. I couldn't wait. But then the reality started setting in. What was I going to do about my business in the United States, which I built? I have about 30 employees. So my company isn't really large enough to have somebody else come in and run it. But it's also not small enough to run on its own. So I was very, very concerned how I'd handle that struggle. And I became even more concerned when I started speaking with former ambicitrices. And I started hearing what they did in Portugal. I was concerned because I wasn't going to be here enough to do any of those things. But on top of that, they were also not things that I was necessarily interested in. So I was really in a quandary in trying to figure out what my role was going to be here. But like Bob, what I knew was when we left Portugal, we wanted to be able to leave here having made a difference. So what I know best, and I describe this, is running and owning small business. I have 22 years of experience in doing just that. So I decided what I wanted to do when I got to Portugal is provide Portuguese women entrepreneurs with the same opportunities that I've had in the United States that has made my company successful. What is more important than the awards are the results, which I'd like to share with you. In a little over a year, Connect to Success has more than 360 women as members. Three of our Connect to Success women were sent to the 2015 Global Entrepreneurship Summit hosted by President Obama in Kenya with their expenses paid for by the US State Department. Over the spring, fall semesters of 2015, seven of Portugal's top business schools offered 22 women entrepreneurs the opportunity to have a specific problem addressed by a group of MBA or master's students over the course of a semester. There have been 28 women entrepreneurs that have had the opportunity to have a team of corporate mentors from 25 different very, very large and successful corporations mentor them for a year. And by the way, we're also currently accepting applications for our Connect to Success women for our 2016 corporate mentoring class that will begin in um, January. And I believe the applications, Carolina, is this right? Open till the 26th? Are open to the 26th of this month. Our Connect to Success women have also had many free park marketing and networking opportunities, including 18 of our Connect to Success women showcasing their products and services at Festival Inn. And next week, another 30 will have the opportunity to showcase their businesses at an event sponsored by the Embassy, Vlad, and Doubletree by Hilton, featuring Christina Ferreira. But at the end of the day, the most sustainable and important takeaway that our Connect to Success women get from the program is not the advice they receive from their mentors or business consultants. It's not the practical skills they learn at the workshop. And it's not the networking or free marketing opportunities they receive, but the self-confidence that they acquire through the program. Self-confidence is the single most common trait of a successful entrepreneur. If you do not believe in yourself, no one will believe in you or your business. With self-confidence, you can control your own fate. And while becoming successful is about creating your own luck, never forget that being successful is 
It's about paying it forward. In that regard, I'm grateful to all of the entrepreneurs, women, corporations, universities, members of the media, and the embassy, all of whom have been vital to the success of Connect to Success.